Catherine, when I first met you, you struck me as that girl who never thought she couldn't, so she did. And I think that can be some of the power of reading books. It opens up your mind. You grew up around books. Yeah, um, my uncle owned a bookstore um, in Houston, a used, rare, out-of-print bookstore in an old, charming house. So, um, yeah, I was constantly reading. My mom's a librarian. Um, I got really lucky because I just spent my whole childhood reading. Yeah, and Vicki, for a lot of us as young girls, we never thought we'd grow up to be the director necessarily. Yeah. What was it in your childhood that made you think, mm, I want to direct what's happening? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with mentors and mentorship um, and sort of a role model. And my mom has always been my greatest role model. She's the adventure taker in our family. And she's sort of like the celebrity of our little six, you know, family unit. Um, and she always, um, as a young person, she traveled from Ireland. We're from Ireland. We immigrated to Houston in the 80s. Um, but she traveled from Ireland as a teenager to go to nursing school in England and then to New York. And so she kind of broadened my um idea of what was possible. And so when we immigrated here from Ireland, she basically said to all of us, you can do whatever you want to do. Now we're in America. And that's, you know, that's where it came from. I always had loved being in the movie theater and thought, gosh, wouldn't it be great to have my name up there? So. Mm. All right. And Nora, for you, you've uh, done Saturday Night Live, which means you can do anything like you can probably do open heart surgery. You've done it. It's, it's just, it's such a cool background to come from. But where did the acting start for you? Very early on in my childhood, I think we, you know, my dad was in community theater, so we saw a lot of uh, a lot of plays, and um, my brothers and sisters and I always played in character. We told stories in character, and my parents were big readers too, and and we were aware of plays and that stuff. So it really started really young. I mean, I decided to be an actress probably by the time I was twelve. Wow. All right. <laughs> and then made it happen. Catherine, um, New York Times bestseller, which is awesome. But to take that book and transfer it into a movie, when you got that phone call, what was that like? Oh, my gosh. It was the most exciting thing ever. I, I'm i still excited. Like every day, I can't even believe that it happened. Um, it's been amazing. Yeah. All right. So give us the basic plot of The Lost Husband, which, by the way, every one of my single girlfriends feels like their husband's lost. They're just trying to find them, perhaps at a, a yeah, farmer's market or a goat farm. Yeah. Yeah. So give us the basic plot. Um, it's basically a story about a lady who kind of accidentally becomes a goat farmer. Um, she's fallen on hard times. She has literally lost her husband before the story even starts. And then um, she, this aunt, who she doesn't really know, invites her to come out to the Texas Hill Country and um, live with her and work on her farm. And she's kind of in bad circumstances, so she just sort of says yes without even thinking too much about it. And of course it creates all kinds of trouble, but it's good trouble. And it's all these opportunities to kind of bounce back from some very hard stuff. Yeah, Vicki, when you, when you read a book, uh, there are times you read one and go, wow, okay, that was great. But this one for you, you're like, okay, this is a movie. I, what determines in this particular book that made you decide I have to do this? Well, I finished it and about 10 minutes after I finished it, I said, I have to get in touch with this novelist because I know this Texas. I know this story. I know this woman. I know these men in this story. I know every, I felt like I knew these people deeply. And, um, you know, my one, when I was adapting the novel into a screenplay, my, you know, your one great regret when you're adapting is that you can't keep everything in the story. And Catherine is such a great writer. You want to keep everything. So I felt very lucky. Um, when Catherine said yes, I felt lucky, but she said yes, you can option my prop my novel. But I felt lucky because I had such great source material from which to work. And yeah. so, um, it, you know, I just saw these people at the grocery store, at the farmers market. She, Catherine writes really authentic characters, so that was a real yeah. pleasure. Yeah. All right. And Nora, for you, um, when you saw this character, what was it that got you? Was it the goat farm? Uh, <laughs> I've always wanted to work with goats. I love animals, anyway, but you know, I think it was the, the script itself had all the characters in the script were very vivid and very real. And it read more like reading a novel than reading a script almost. It was really, yeah. I'm sorry, that's my dog. Yeah, you said you love animals, so there you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then, you know, this was a beautiful character. And I've actually gotten a lot of tweets just about Aunt Jean now. Women are tweeting me saying, I need you, Aunt Jean. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is an Aunt Jean. Like you talked about those characters that we relate to. We all kind of have that Aunt Jean in our life. Yeah. So Catherine, the last time I talked to you, you were excited about meeting a particular person named Josh. <laughs> okay, and, and how did that meeting go? 
You know, it is, um, it's really hard to be around uh, Josh Jamel because he's such a movie star and he's very, very nice, but he's just so movie star-ish. You feel weird. I mean, you just, you can't speak and you, 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 your skin sort of starts to crackle. You feel like a rotisserie chicken at the grocery <laughs> store. It's crazy. It's crazy. But he's so nice. You can't help but just totally love him because he's like the nicest person yeah, ever. He is. You, you did a cameo, and uh, when you were shooting that, I don't know if you noticed, I was over there. I was in okra. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the okra section of, of the farmer's market. But uh, what was it like to do that? Because that's something that's, that you completely weren't expecting. It's one thing to have someone say, I want this book to be a movie. It's another thing to actually be in the movie. I was very grateful to them for letting me come and be a part of it. It's like the most glamorous thing I've ever done, probably. And um, it's harder than it looks, actually. It's really hard to pretend that you're shopping, but not actually be shopping. Like actors make it look very easy. Yeah, yeah, all right. So when the movie ends, we're all curled up on the sofa with our robes on and stuff and the credits start to roll. Nora, what is it you think people can get from this, especially now? Because I think everything that brings out emotion in us counts times 100 right now with what we're yeah. going through. I think recovery. And not in the sense of the, the rehab recovery, it's the new recovery that we, we were now thinking about. It's, it's uh, about, you know, losing something we weren't expecting to lose. And it's really going to be how we handle this loss. And you can't, you don't want to lose. You, you, can, you can move forward if you yeah. help each other. And so it's, it seems like the perfect movie for the pandemic era. Vicki? I agree. I think that, you know, we are inundated with so much, um, honestly, you know, conflicting information and challenges and negativity. And this film really sort of is the panacea to all of that. It gives you um, sort of a recipe to feel better and good. And you can watch the film with your entire family and not be embarrassed. And I think that's something that <laughs> a lot of times when you're with your kids and I have a, you know, a teenager and a, you know, an 11 year old, and sometimes you're watching something and you're like, oh, forward through this, forward through this. Yeah, it's like, stop, stop, stop <laughs> watching. Okay. You know, you, you're, everyone's growing up so quickly. And even I'm, you know, growing up too quickly like I want to grow back in time yeah. and the movie is sort of an old-fashioned throwback romance to that period and it evokes all those kind of um really positive vibes you know and yeah so I think that's I do I agree with Nora I think it's a great um recovery and respite from our the, the noise of every day especially yeah. now uh, anyway thank you so much for sharing time with us today and thank you so much for taking part in such a great project thank thanks you. so much I'm going to steal that rotisserie chicken reference. That was hilarious. The Lost Husband is now available to rent on Amazon Prime. Catherine Center's newest book, What You Wish For, will be released this July. She's doing a promotion with Houston's Blue Willow Bookshop to help support um, to help support everybody in these crazy times. And every Catherine Center book ordered from Blue Willow comes with a hand-painted signed book plate. For more information, visit greatdayhouston.com.